and lockdown measures have made no difference to their ability to cope during the crisis and that's a bit more of a shocker charities were asked what their biggest fears were over the last uh, eight weeks after the first wave and certainly social distancing whilst returning to work came out top of the 43 percent closely followed by having to reduce services that they offer at 42 percent around a fifth mentioned lack of volunteers and certainly an increase in demand at 21 percent Other charities have informed us that they're reducing office space and some even getting rid of office altogether. Um, but where we see one of the key portions that we're helping charities at the moment is with remote working. Although schools have taken the lion's share of migration resources and certainly some larger businesses during the pandemic, um, now charities have expressed a need to catch up and migrate to either the cloud or do remote working better. Those who are not using uh, digital collaboration platforms like Microsoft Teams or Google um, are now planning to do so. Some charity, charity migration plans certainly we've been looking at with their existing service providers do not appear to have grasped the cost effectiveness of cloud digital collaboration platforms. We've even experienced some service providers have been forcing charities into hybrid solutions of expensive remote access into physical locations. This is not the greatest way to achieve uh, digital collaboration and certainly we can help in two ways. We can either help plan with migration itself or we can help charities actually perform the migration. In terms of what we offer, we have indeed uh, moved charities into Microsoft Teams. We have migration strategies for over 1,200 users or right down to 10. So scalability is not a problem for us. But security is of the utmost importance. Where we look at the secure or hybrid premises where it's needed, it is about how they're connecting into the office, how their staff have been using clients' information at home or from unsecured connections, where they have tested their IT security whilst working with these changes. So whatever they're up to, whatever the challenge is, we're here to help keep them safe and help keep the information safe. For those of you present during the school's webinar last week, you'll be familiar with some of our service offerings. But again, assessment of cyber risk from finding the gaps through to strategic planning. Security assessments and remediation of uh, digital collaboration platforms and Microsoft Teams being one of our specialities. And what effect has COVID-19 pandemic had on the certification or compliance within the charity sector? Again, according to the government's cybersecurity breaches survey of 2020, almost half of the businesses, 46 percent, and more than a quarter of charities have reported experiencing cybersecurity breaches or attacks within the last six months. So does the organisation have Cyber Essentials or Cyber Essentials Plus certification? Again, even if they have or have not, we can help with assessing the cybersecurity in these unprecedented times. Is the organisation ISO 27001 certified? Again, it is rare within the charity industries that they are, but again, there are elements to remote working that have to be dealt with. But one of the major implications where organisations deal with payments by credit card or debit card and are required to comply with the payment card industry data security standards or the PCI DSS. Although there have been specific PCI DSS requirements relating to remote working for a long time, are they currently complying with them? These are one of the, some of the key questions that you guys need to be asking. Do they even know what some of those are? Certainly some of their financial people do, but are they the people that are in charge of those card machines currently? If charities breach the PCI compliance standards, it could disqualify the organisations from taking card payments. And that, especially in these times, is absolutely core um, to what a charity could be doing and, and could really cut them off at the knees. We at ALC can provide assessment of cyber risk and funding the gaps through that strategic planning. Now, one, of the, one of the bigger topics uh, that I've been involved with certainly over the last 20 years in, in IT charities 
Um, we have come across many charity database systems, some very rudimentary, others bespoke developments, but to those that purport to be off the shelf charity specific systems. Certainly security of remote access to these systems is poor. A few of these systems are cloud based, but none of these systems are very malleable. The best route to good BRM management is to look at good CRM systems. Convincing a charity services team in using a CRM system takes good knowledge of what charities do, how they help beneficiaries, how they interact with their financial teams, and certainly how they interact with volunteers and trustees. We can help with all these. We have experience and we have completed projects like this across the charity sector. The core to any charity is the data they hold to support their people that matter most, their beneficiaries. Good CRM systems like Microsoft Dynamics 365 can be converted into great BRM systems. So here are some key examples of how we have helped the charity sector and the many people they helped during lockdown. We developed five charity COVID grant systems over the period of lockdown. The first requiring complex data criteria collection. With custom data fields in the CRM system, we created web forms and existing charities websites. The website fields collecting the data requested from beneficiaries, the flows and checking the input of data, which companies they belong to and what family category they belong to, were decided the amount that was to be awarded. The fields in the CRM were updated based on this collected information and any financial proof and ID could be securely uploaded from the website and pulled directly into the beneficiary record section of the cases. The second system concentrated on the scanned information from potential beneficiaries phones. This was a flow solely set up to pull any uploaded documents, photos into the system, which would link it to the customer's case based on values pulled from the website's submissions. The third looked at successful awarding of grants to save the charity days worth of work. And you wouldn't believe the amount of the amount of um, work that the, this does save the actual charity services teams. Once a support advisor assessed the case to see if it was qualified for support, they would change a field in the case, which would then trigger a payment to be created, as well as an email to the client to let them know that an award was successful. All these processes had to concentrate on efficiency as grant applications from these systems processed hundreds of thousands of applications during the pandemic. The fourth, unfortunately, had to concentrate on the unsuccessful applications. This checked based on the matching criteria, incomplete applications, and then the charity services teams processing and qualifying out applications. The fifth system looked at providing training bookings for furloughed staff, booking hundreds of people into matching algorithms to output remotely delivered training and output the trainers' calendars, delivered schedules to each applicant. All of these systems and the stats that provided through these, we served over a million pound spent in grants between five companies in the first month of lockdown. In total, two million in grants provided to over 5,000 people of the charities we helped. All of this was developed in the first two weeks from inception to live, but then continually developed in an agile methodology as more companies came on board. On to big data. So what does bad data look like? From the charities collection, they do a lot of data, but bad data looks a little bit like this picture on, on the left here. With the right data analytics, good data governance, an understanding of great data management, we can help make bad data good. Charities collect a lot of data. This data requires good data management, and we can help with this. It's surprising how many charities have bad data. All are aware of GDPR, some have data cleansing exercises, but rarely have we come across charities that manage big data well. Long gone are the days where you can sell postcode checking or Dun & Bradstreet checking software to ensure that data is collected is accurate. Artificial intelligence is core to aid with big data these days. It deals with the data sets faster than people can process, edit and amend the information to comply. 
but they also need to comply with GDPR under, under these bases. If you know we need help discussing data governance or big data management with your clients, we're here to help. But most importantly, how can we help you by discussing this with, with the charities? Hopefully it's given you a bit of food for thought and thank you for listening. We have uh, indeed had um, the slides available and they can be provided to you as well as recordings um, after the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Questions? Adrian. Thanks for that. Thanks for that presentation. And I think some some really key and important message in there um, provided. So um, for me, um, I'd like to uh, hand over to the floor and uh, invite any questions uh, for, for the next three to five minutes uh, before we move on with the presentation. Anybody has any questions? Um, yeah, please, please speak. Uh, I suppose it's Joe here, just just thinking okay. aloud. Uh, Brian and Adrian, if 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 the door was open for for a meeting, what would be the sort of engagement process you'd recommend um, to understanding where the respective charities are in their maturity around some of the things you've talked about? Well, I think I think obviously it, it's important for us to to start from 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 the ground up. Really, you know, we 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 are very very meticulous around our questioning around understanding what that client's vision is um, rather than imparting our own vision on what great IT looks like uh, as far as their business is concerned what we try to discover is what their vision of great IT and great business looks like uh, we then start with road mapping technology to match that vision so um, it's not about us imparting our opinions around uh, around what they should be doing it's around finding out what they want to do and matching that technology um, to, to to suit that business. You know, they they know how to run their business. We're we're not experts in their business, so you know, it's about listening and understanding, and taking them on a journey from, if you will, from this what exists now, all the way to that. And that that period of time could be twelve months. It could be thirty six months. It could be sixty months. It really doesn't matter. But it's it, it's really about intelligent questioning. And I think what we bring to the party here is the ability to help people, to help our partners at Auditel and other organisations ask those important questions um, um, and, and 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 get a viewpoint from that perspective. So uh, does that answer the question, Joe? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Is there anybody else that would like to?